Hey folks, Scott Kelby here from KelbyOne.com and we are doing an advanced Lightroom tutorial today. It's 90% Lightroom and just 10% Photoshop. There's just a little Photoshopping we have to do, but it's 90% uh, Lightroom. Uh, by advanced, I mean we're going to be moving at the speed of an advanced user and I'm not going to be explaining every little step. So you'll see what I mean as you watch the tutorial, but this is for someone who's been using Lightroom uh, for a while and you're very comfortable with it. And so we can move at a quick pace. Let's go. Here's our picture. This is taken in St. Pancreas in London. I took it about a week or so ago. Uh, it's quite a popular Instagram spot. And um, as I learned when I showed up and there were 30 people already there, all kinds of things wrong with this photo. This is what we're going to start with. And this is our final image here. So this is where we're going to take it. So there's the before and after. So let's go ahead and start with the before picture. Uh, the first thing that strikes me about this is that there's a lens issue. You can see that these are kind of leaning in. This whole side of the building is kind of leaning in over here. So my first stop would be to jump over to lens corrections, turn on enable profile collect corrections. So it, it, it automatically kind of fix some of the vignetting and some other issues. While I'm here, I will normally turn on remove chromatic aberrations. So if I get any aberrations uh, or I enhance any aberrations that are already there during my post, which is very common. I just turn that on to be safe. Now, uh, let's go to transform here and I'm going to go to the manual ones. If I click auto, watch what happens. It's a little too much. So I'm going to hit off instead and I'm going to instead just use the vertical here and I'm going to try to straighten. Now, I'm looking at this wall over here on the right, the columns, sorry, on the right, and I'm trying to kind of straighten those out a bit. So something like that. Now, when I did this, you can see we lost a little bit of height in the photo, which is why I would then go to the aspect here and then straighten it up a bit, stretch it out a little bit more so it doesn't get kind of fat. It looks kind of nice and tall and lean. And then I'm going to hit constrain crop to get rid of that other junk that's there. Now, as I look at the photo, it, it looks even though we kind of fixed some of that stuff, it looks like it's leaning a little to the right. So I'm just going to go to the rotate slider here and just rotate it back a little that way, just so it looks kind of straighter. I'm kind of looking at like that column and this kind of right here. That looks, I think, quite a bit straighter. So we can see, you know, just that kind of help things, right? So it doesn't look so weird and distorted. So that's kind of, kind of your get ready stuff. Then let's go over here to the basic panel and we'll just go through it. Uh, I don't generally use the Adobe profile uh, that's called, I mean, excuse me, the color profile called Adobe Color. Uh, I'm going to try either Landscape or Vivid for this. Let's look at Landscape. Ooh, that's nice. Put in a nice little pop in the reds. Vivid. Yeah, I like Landscape better, so we'll go with Landscape. Now, if you want a quick starting place, hit Auto and just see what you get. For this photo, not too terrible, not awesome, but I'm going to increase the contrast and increase the shadows a bit and I'm going to pull the highlights back even more it's it's just awfully bright up in this area here uh, in fact I think we're going to have to deal with that so let's go ahead and go to the uh, oh wait before I leave here I'm going to increase the texture to bring out texture and increase the clarity to make it kind of have some more snap so those two things kind of give an overall better look of sharpness let's get the adjustment brush up here and what I want to do is I'm going to kind of darken these areas over here. So let's uh, pick a number, I don't know, up stop down or whatever. And uh, let's kind of darken this whole area over here. Now it looks a little dark, but that's okay. I can fix that afterwards. That's the nice thing about the adjustment brush, right? If you pick the wrong number, it's easy to fix it later. Let's just get rid of these areas that are obviously just kind of really screaming brightness. All right, over there. I don't really need to... <laughs> I didn't need to darken that hallway so much. So I'm going to hold the Option key if you're on a Mac, Alt key if you're on Windows, and get rid of that stuff. All right, that's uh, now it's, it is too dark, so let's pull it back a little bit. There we go. What I'm trying to do is basically balance the light in the room. That's key for these interior shots. And I'm going to go ahead and hit New up here at the top of the uh, Adjustment Brush panel, and I'm going to drag the exposure to the right a bit now. And we're going to brighten this whole wall to make it kind of match the rest of the... Uh, and this is a little dark right there. And let's do the ceiling as well and brighten that up. I'm just trying to kind of balance the color a bit. I mean, excuse me, the light in the room. And let's hit New. Let's make our brush smaller. 
and let's paint in these areas. Again, I'm trying to just to make sure that the, the color is kind of reasonably lit the same. And we could use a little more in that hallway. Made that a little too dark earlier in that hallway and that hallway. And that's pretty typical of what I would do is anything that's kind of hidden back there in the shadows. Let's pull it out. People like to see all that detail and stuff. I still think that darkening might have been a bit too much. Let's go to that pin. Which pin was that? So was it that's the wall? And there we go. This is the pin right over here on the left side. You can see if I hold my cursor over it, those are the areas. And I still think it's a, maybe I went a little too far with it. Actually, let's do this. Let's pull the exposure back up to maybe a half, but then lower the highlights a little so maybe it's not so punchy. There we go. So we're getting pretty close. Uh, let's see what else we need to do. Eh, the stairs are a little dark over there. Let's hit the brush tool again, hit new. And let's brighten these stairs right here so they don't look so dark. And let's lower that. It seems a bit bright now. It went from too dark to too bright. Actually, I'm going to hit delete. It doesn't really need it on this side of the stairs as much as it does on the other side of the stairs. There we go. doesn't so much need it on that middle so you're getting, just getting some shadows in there there we go I think that that probably does a better job we can get along that edge if we like does anything else need balancing maybe a little bit in here and maybe in there and I think we're pretty close it still seems a little dark up here in the left corner let's get that and I think we're okay we are going to need to jump over to Photoshop to do this last part. Also, I'm looking at my columns are leaning in a little bit. I might have overcorrected that. Let's go to transform. Let's go to vertical. And maybe I need to not do it quite as much. There we go. In fact, we may not have to go to Photoshop at all. This looks pretty good right here. There is a little weirdness in the... I wonder if I can fix it with a horizontal... A little bit of weirdness in the room. It's kind of, I think it needs a little bit of horizontal. There we go. I think that needed that. Now it needs a little more rotation. This is just what I'm figuring. I'm not 100% certain. Sometimes you just have to mess with these things until you get it. Yeah, I think that's really not too bad. I don't think we're going to have to go over to Photoshop at all. I thought we'd have to go over there to do some lens stuff. There is one thing that I would do if I was going to go over to Photoshop and do some lens stuff. And that is... See how when you get to the edges of a wide angle lens, it kind of stretches it at the edges. I might like pull that in a little bit. Just this, like I would select this side and pull it in a little bit, but I'm not really sure it's that necessary. We may be able to finish up right here. Let's go to effects and let's go to uh, highlight priority and just darken the edges a little bit. And I think we're pretty much there. The only thing you might do Let's go to the basic panel. If you wanted to warm this up a little, go to the temperature slider. Bring it over to the left to warm up the walls a little bit. They're a little blue, and that was because I was using auto white balance. But I think that's that's pretty good now. Like You could finish it up with some sharpening. I don't think we're going to have to go to Photoshop at all, ladies and gents. Let's crank up the sharpening a bit. And I think we're there. Let me give it a good look and see if there's, I mean, I could be picky and, you know, like you could go in there and add some detail in there. You could, you know, lighten that up, get a, a increase the shadows and highlights and lighten that up. But then you don't want the yellowing on there. You know, you don't want it to look yellow. So you got to back the yellow off there. And that was kind of a, just a sloppy job overall. I think I kind of spilled over the top and just that was not my best work as you can see but um yeah that's really not too bad it's done all right here in lightroom which is also not too bad and i think uh, we're good let's take a um, side by side before and after so you can see yeah really not too bad i mean yeah you could you could tweak it a little more in photoshop and maybe get some of the um yeah i'm going to photoshop doggone it <laughs> I was trying not to, but I'm going to press Command-E on Mac or Control-E on Windows. There's something that's driving me a little bit crazy, and it's it's a perspective thing. It may not be bothering you. 
It's bothering me a little. Let's duplicate the layer so you can see it. Let's press Command T on Mac or, T, or Control T on Windows and let's see if I'm going to hold the Command key as we do this and let's see if we can maybe fix this end a little bit. There we go. See how it it was a little funky there. So let me just show you what that little move did, right? And now that top is off by a little bit. Those those wall that needs to be straight that column. There we go. All right, watch from before and after. See how it kind of just fixed that side? And I kind of could have probably done some of that in Lightroom. That's not bad. Hey, I will show you the other trick that I was talking about. Let me flatten that just to show you. Uh, let me unlock that background layer. Here's what I was talking about. Going into right here, maybe. Going to Free Transform, holding the Shift key, and just getting rid of some of that distortion. Just pull it over like that. Now, it will require you to recrop the image when you're done. You're going to have a slightly smaller image because I pulled it in a bit. But that way, the, the edges here aren't distorted from the wide angle lens. So let's just, uh, I guess we can just crop it in here. Just make a little crop. Maroon is probably the quickest way to do it. And then that would be your final image, all right? Hey, by the way, if you like this kind of stuff, you should be at Photoshop World. So in Vegas in August, so August 21st, 22nd, 23rd, we've got training all day long on Lightroom every single day. Uh, the teachers are myself and Terry White and Matt Kleskowski and Serge Ramali and Rob Silvet. I mean, it's all the best known names in Lightroom are gonna be there teaching. Uh, and you should be there as well. You will have a ball. You will learn a ton. And you will come back home a Lightroom shark for sure. Uh, plus, we're all there to answer your questions. The Lightroom help desk is there. There's just tons of, of things to do. Make sure you bring your camera. There's a lot of shooting opportunities. It, it, it's called Photoshop World, but it really should probably be called Photography World because there's more photography classes by far than there are Photoshop classes. But uh, anyway, hope to see you there. Uh, go, go now while you can still get rooms. We're at the Mirage Resort and Casino right there in the heart of the Vegas Strip. Go get your rooms there. Go get your tickets now. You can save 100 bucks by booking early. And if you're a Kelby One member, you save another 100 bucks. So you can get 200 bucks off now. So go do that. Go to PhotoshopWorld.com. And we will see you in Vegas. Woo, woo. Okay, I was maybe a little over the top. Anyway, thanks, guys. I appreciate you watching. Hope you found it helpful. We'll catch you next time. Hopefully, I'll see you in Las Vegas.